All right. Hello. <laughs> I'm going to come over here. <laughs> so, hi guys. My name's Emily. Um, I'm not going to lie. My dad asked me to preach last week and I thought he was joking. <laughs> so, I jokingly said yes, but here I am. <laughs> But I have been gone for the past six months at a program called YWAM. Has, have any of you guys heard of YWAM before? Okay, quite a few. So the motto of YWAM is to know God and to make God known. So for the past five months, I was in a school. Um, the first three was called lecture phase, and it was in New Zealand. And so every single week, I would learn something new. We had different themes. And so, for an example, one of the themes was hearing God's voice or Lordship Week or um, the Father Heart of God. And so every week was very intense, but I learned so much. Um, I have some pictures for you guys. So that was where I lived. I took that picture. And then the next slide. Okay, so that's me with my team. All of us are on the picture in the left, and that was at the place called Hobbiton. I don't know if you guys have seen Lord of the Rings, but it was all filmed in New Zealand. Um, and actually, when we went there, some people thought hobbits were real. <laughs> so they were like, where are they? They don't exist. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, I was with the same nine people for six months, so we got to know each other very well. <laughs> And then the next slide is some more pictures I took. Um, that was at the beach that was 10 minutes from where I lived. So while you guys were in the negative 50 degree weather, I was living it up in New Zealand. <laughs> but of course, also learning so much about God. So I wanted to start out by showing you guys some of Thailand. So like I said, the first three months were in New Zealand. And then the second two months, we got to go on a missions trip to Thailand. So I have a video for you guys if you want to play that, Austin. So that was a little bit of Thailand. And I can honestly say it was the weirdest two months of my life. <laughs> we did a lot of different things there. Um, they really loved dancing. So that's why you saw us in onesies on stage. We were dancing for kids with cancer. And we can't dance, but we did it. <laughs> Um, one thing that we also did a lot in the beginning was paint fences. So for the first 11 days, we um, were just painting fences. And I have a picture of me with paint all over myself because this is all we had been doing for 11 days. And then when we went to the next place, we saw another fence and we all jokingly said, oh, I bet we'll have to pen paint that fence too. And we did. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was fun. But some other things that we did, um, we got to go to school assemblies. So if you see the picture right there, we actually went to that school multiple times. And that picture is of all of us because the students drew us. Um, yeah, the, the people there are super sweet and they just really want to get to know you. And then um, there's a picture of my team right there. And some other things that we did. Um, we also got to work with children, and we got to visit orphanage, orphanages and clean them. And then the picture on the left, bottom right there, was from an English camp. And so I actually wanted to share with you guys a story from that English camp. And I, I talked about it in the letter, but I don't know if all of you guys heard that. But when we were at the English camp, we got to talk about God. And most of the students there have never heard about God before. They've never heard the name of Jesus because 99% of the people in Thailand are Buddhist. And so it was very intense for a lot of them. But actually the next week at church, I met a girl that was at the English camp. And I said, oh, how long have you been a Christian for? And she said, I just became a Christian at the English camp. And so we started talking and she was saying um, how she just was overwhelmed by the sacrifice that God has given for her because she had never heard it before. And she was overwhelmed by his love because when she prayed to Buddha, all she felt was fear and emptiness. But when she prayed to God, she felt love and peace. And so when I heard that, it really just, um, I guess, surprised me because I think a lot of us are just used to feeling God's presence and God's love. But a lot of them had never even felt it before. And so um, that's a bit of what happened in Thailand. 
We also got to work in some hospitals, and it was there that we got to pray for people and talk even more about Jesus and just share his name and how he is the only God, because to them, there's many gods. So that was super powerful for them, but for us too. Another thing that we got to do a lot in Thailand is share our testimonies. So I got to share mine in front of 500 students at a Buddhist school, which was kind of scary, but <laughs> really fun. And so I actually wanted to share mine with you guys today. So I'm just going to put some p pretty pictures up for you while I talk. <laughs> but, um, so like I said, my name's Emily. I'm 19 years old, and I've been a Christian for most of my life because I grew up in a Christian family. You know, my parents are pastors at the church you go to. <laughs> um, but I didn't really have my own relationship with God until I was about 15, and I went on a missions trip to Italy. And that's where I really started to pursue God. But it was during that same year that my life just started to go wrong. And I was kind of confused because I thought that if you were a Christian, that everything was going to be great in life, that you would have no struggles because... You love God, so why would you, you know? But that year, I actually started struggling with depression. And so I started to question God, and I started to ask him what my purpose is because I didn't really want to be alive anymore, and I didn't really see the point in it all. And so I would ask him, but nothing would really change. And so I struggled with that for a couple of years. And then last year, actually, it was starting to get better, but then I broke my neck. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> so I don't know if all of you guys know, but while I was at university, I broke my neck in the most embarrassing way. I fell off my bed. <laughs> yeah, I fell off my bunk bed and I broke my neck. So now it was like I was broken on the inside, but I could always hide that. But now I was broken on the outside too. And so I was very angry at God for letting this happen because I felt like I couldn't hide anymore. And so I told God, okay, I tried. I tried to get your help. I prayed for you. I prayed that you would help me, but you didn't. And I feel like you're not listening to me. So I still believed in God, but I kind of just turned away and was like, you know what? I tried, but you didn't help me. So I'm just going to do my own thing. And so my life was okay. I had good friends and I had a lot of fun, but I was just very angry at God. And that's when he told me to go to YWAM. And I don't even know why I ended up going because I was so angry at him. But I decided to obey him. And I'm so happy that I did. Because it was in YWAM where I really started to learn um, God's character. And that changed everything. Because before, my relationship with God was dependent on how my life was going. It was dependent on how I thought my relationship with God was. And it was almost like it was more for me than to like love God. When I would read the Bible, I would only read the letters that Paul wrote to like help myself instead of actually knowing who God is and digging into his word. And so um, during this time, I would ask a lot of my leaders at YWAM because we were learning about God's character. And they kept saying how he's faithful, but this almost made me more angry because I didn't think he was with me during that time. And so I was learning how to listen to God and they all were like, well, have you asked him where he was during that time? I was like, no. <laughs> Why would I do that? And so I did. And he told me that he was with me the entire time and that he had never left me. And so this really just shook my world because when I thought he was gone, he was actually trying to comfort me. And he reminded me of a couple of stories of when he was actually pursuing me. So there was this one night when I was at university, and at my university, there's this thing called PG. It stands for Praise Gathering. And so for two hours, um, you just worship God. And so it was near the end of worship, and I was just sitting there, and I was still angry at God. And so I told him, you know what, God, I'm not going to go to you anymore for comfort. I'm going to go to people because I've asked you to just, like, hold me, but you won't. And so a couple minutes later, some random lady that I had never seen before came up to me, and she just hugged me. Yeah. <laughs> and my dad's face was like... <laughs> she just hugged me, and she held me for, like, a couple songs. And I didn't really know what was happening, <laughs> but I just went with it. 
And after that, she goes, that was from God. He just wanted to hold you. And so God was hearing my prayers, and he loves me. Yes, amen. (laughs) And he loves me so much that he sent someone to me, because when I couldn't hear him, he still wanted me to know that he was holding me. And then after that, I went out of worship a little early, and there was a man there standing with, like, a table of donuts. (laughs) And he was like, do you want a donut? Like, you can have a donut. And I was like, yes, I want one. And then he was like, I have roses in the back of my car too. Do you want me to get them for you? And I was like, yeah. (laughs) So it was like God held me and then he gave me a donut and roses. What more do you need? (laughs) But also a really cool story that happened at YWAM. So like I said, I broke my neck Um, last year and so I still have some pain sometimes in my neck and my back and so there was this one night when my neck was really hurting and I hate asking people to pray for healing for my neck because so many people prayed for it before but it never worked and so God told me to um, ask my friend to pray for my neck but I was like yeah that's not gonna happen and he was like just do it and so I did And while my friend was praying for my neck, I started to feel like my neck get warm and my hands, my um, friend's hand get warm. And then she prayed again and it wasn't warm that time, but my neck had felt better. And so I was super excited because God was healing my neck and I was just worshiping God and praising him. And then all of a sudden I saw a picture of like a door and a figure with like black robes holding a scroll. And the figure was leaving the door. And I had no idea what the picture meant. But then a couple minutes later, God told me that that was my depression leaving. And so not only had God healed my neck, but he healed my depression too. Uh, Yeah, (laughs) amen. (laughs) And that's something that I thought I would struggle with the rest of my life. So at first I didn't even believe it was gone, but I haven't struggled with it ever since. So that was so exciting. Yeah, (laughs) so good. To just see God's character in that, that even though I only asked for, like, my neck to be healed, he went above and beyond just to show me that he cares and just to show me that he loves me and he hears me and he's pursuing me. And so today I wanted to talk a little bit about um, God's character as a defender. So in YWAM, we have this thing called quiet time, which is basically just a word for, um, like, the time that you spend with God every day. And so they really encourage us to do that. Um, And so while I was in Thailand, God told me to read the book of Ezekiel. (laughs) And I was like, are you sure? (laughs) Like out of all books, Ezekiel, I didn't even know that was really a book. (laughs) It doesn't sound very interesting. (laughs) I don't think it could help me. But it actually changed a lot of my perspective. And so I'm just going to share with you guys what I learned in Ezekiel. Um... I'll sum it up a little just in case you guys didn't know what it was either. (laughs) But my Bible describes Ezekiel as the message to the captives. And so in Ezekiel, God tells Ezekiel to tell the people of Israel to stop disobeying God because the people of Israel have um, false prophets and they have false idols and false gods. And so God is looking at this and he's angry because he's jealous for the Israelites' love. And so Ezekiel tells the Israelites to stop, but they don't listen to him. And so God gets jealous of this. And I want to share from Ezekiel 13, because I think this just shows like such a crazy side of God, just how he cares so much. Um, so if you'll turn to Ezekiel 13, and I'm going to read verse 20 through 23. So it says... And this is um, God talking to the false prophets. So this is what the Lord says. I am against your magic charms by which you trap people as if they were birds. I will tear those charms off your arms and I will free those people you have trapped like birds. I will also tear off your veils and save my people from your hands. They will no longer be trapped by your power. Then you will know that I am Lord. By your lies you have caused those who did right to be sad when I do not make them sad. And you have encouraged the wicked not to stop being wicked, which would have saved their lives. So you will not see false visions or prophecy anymore, and I will save my people from your power so you will know that I am Lord. 
So I really love these verses because in this, I see that God sees his people. He sees, he sees his people listening to the false prophets and to the false idols and gods. But he, he doesn't want them to fall for that. So he stands up for them. He stops the false prophets. And he doesn't just stop there, but he rips off all of the magic charms that they've done to them. And so, um, Ezekiel, a message to the captives. I think that we are also the captives in this story. Like maybe we're trapped by our own sin, but God is leading us anyways. And he's giving us gifts. He's giving us the gifts of grace. Even though we should be giving us him gifts, he's the one healing us and transforming us and loving us. And that's just so hard for me to comprehend, but we don't, because we don't deserve it, but he does it anyways. Um, his love is gentle and powerful, but it's not cautious. It's extravagant. And so with cautious love, there's fear. And so it's like you'd think that God would have fear in our love because he knows that we're going to hurt him and he knows that we're going to mess up. But yet, God loves us fearlessly anyways. And he wants to save us. He wants to save us from our own sin. And he wants to be first in our life. So it was super cool reading Ezekiel in Thailand because it's all about false gods and false prophets. And in Thailand, since there's so many Buddhists, um, you see a lot of Buddhist statues everywhere with like fruit or people going up to praise them. Um, but in that, I started to get God's heart for those people and just almost like his jealous love of he sees them worshiping those false things, but he wants that love. And I don't think he just wants that love to be loved, but I think he wants that love so he can protect us. So um, in Psalms 91, it says it's all about safe in the Lord. And it says in the first couple of verses, those who go to God, the most high for safety, will be protected by the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, you are my place of safety and protection. You are my God and I trust you. So maybe you hear this verse and you get angry because you feel like you can't trust God or um, he has failed you in the past. Because that's what I kind of thought before when I was angry at God. But I promise you that whatever you're going through, God is with you because he is faithful. And in the first verse of 91, it says, those who go to God most high for safety will be protected by the Almighty. It says those who go to God. So we must go to God to be protected by him. And he will give us those warnings. He will give us those signs because he loves us and he is a defender because that's who he says he is. Um, and so with this, I think it's super cool because I used to worship God mostly because of like what he's done for me. But now I worship God because he's worthy of that and because he's good, because I know his character. So another really cool thing I learned in YWAM was, um, like I said before, I was questioning my purpose a lot. Like, why am I here? But I learned that really God just wants to have a relationship with us. That is the purpose of why we're here. And that's all we have to do is know God. One thing I also loved about being in Thailand was just seeing the Buddhists um, almost like striving for love because their, their goal is to like, is to get an ultimate peace. But honestly, as humans, we're never going to achieve that without God. And that's why I love Jesus so much because he says, no, you come to me as you are, but I'm going to transform you. All you have to do is know me. And he doesn't let us sit in our, our sin. He calls us higher every single day. And so God's been challenging me to put him first in my life. And I think it can look different for everyone, but for me, it's just waking up and spending time with him right away as soon as I wake up. Because I think it's super important to spend time with him and choose him every single day um, because he's worthy of that. And also, he's going to transform you through that. So yeah, when I was praying for you guys today, God just wanted, um, God just told me that he just wanted me to remind you of his jealous love. And Anna, you can come on up. But just like in Ezekiel, when the people were believing the prophets, he doesn't want to let you like sit in your sin or 
sit in the things that have trapped you, but instead he wants to transform you. And so I just wanted to challenge you guys with the question of who is God to you? What character is he um, teaching you in your life? And also, how are you putting him first? Is there anything in your life that is separating you from him? And so I'm just going to pray, and then we're going to have a time of worship, and I would love for you guys just to think of those questions as we worship. So I'll just pray for you guys. But dear God, I just thank you so much for the experiences um, that you've given me and the things that you've taught me today um, and that I got to share it with them today, God. And I just pray that it would really just stick in their hearts, that they would just remember your character, that they would just be able to reflect um, who reflect on who you are and how you've treated them so well, God, and how you've been in our lives, God. And I just thank you for who you are and that we can always trust you, God, that we can always trust your faithfulness, God, and that you'll never let us down. And so I just pray that as we worship you, we would just feel your presence. We would just feel your love, God, and we would not take that for granted. Um, I just thank you for how you protect us, God, and how you're never going to leave us alone, but you're always guiding us. Amen.